Hello friends. So today we are doing a video all about my 12 hour plus makeup routine because I went to a wedding this weekend and I had to get, oh, what is this hair doing? I'm not sure. I had to put my makeup on at 7 a.m. and I didn't get home until 9.30. I did um, post on my Instagram. I actually posted on my personal Instagram, but my makeup Instagram is Jolene underscore makeup. And on there I asked what people wanted to see this week and although it was very tight, there was one vote more for this than the all natural no foundation look, um, which I'll do next week, I decided to film this video. So I'm also going to include some wedding tips because I did do wedding makeup this weekend. So I thought that would be a fun little thing to do together. We're going to start with my primer. So I got this for my client that I worked on, my aunt, but uh, it's a Tatcha liquid silk canvas primer. It's decently expensive, but it has really good ingredients in it and it also smooths your skin. So it does really make a difference. It makes my skin feel amazing. So I love this primer right now. As an FYI, I did moisturize my face and use under eye cream when I started my hair. So this is similar to the look that I did the day of the wedding. So I just wanted to recreate it for you guys just so you could see it. Um, but I did moisturize before I started doing this. So that way I had time to sink into my skin and my skin was ready and prepped for makeup. So what I did the other day, I purchased this when I went to Sephora to get all the products for uh, my aunt's makeup. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade One Fair. And I put this under my foundation so that way I could have a nice glow through. It's pretty glowy, so I did not put it over, but having it go under gave me a nice glow from within. So it does have a doe foot. I just kind of swiped it on my face like this. On both sides, then on my nose, on my cupid's bow, and on my chin. So then I took my sponge, my itty bitty one, so I have two sponges, foundation and powder, concealer, liquid bronzer, and liquid highlight. And I'm just taking, I'll take the side, because I'm gonna use this end for bronzer and up here for my concealer. So I'll take the side and I'll just blend it in. Okay, so now our skin is prepped and you can see how glowy that product is, especially on my Cupid's bow here. So what I used for my aunt on her actual wedding day was this Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. It looked really nice on her skin. I did like it a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna pump out a little bit here. I did not use this on my skin that day. I'm just showing you what it looks like right here. So I am tanner on my body than I am on my face right now, but um, this color still is relevant for my skin tone on my face. So the only thing is I did not use this the day that my makeup lasted 12 hours, but for the sake of the wedding, portion of this, I will use this foundation. What I used, which is my current favorite, I tried it a couple weeks ago when I went on a date with Sean and I love it. It's the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Serum Foundation with Broad Spectrum SPF 15. It's suitable for sensitive skin. So that's the foundation and I have it in the shade, I don't know, Calico. And it's gorgeous and it doesn't sit into my fine lines. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to use this Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation in the shade R230. So the reason that this foundation is so wonderful, and I did a lot of research before I did my aunt's makeup just to see, and we did a trial, but just to see what foundation would be best for, you know, wedding makeup. So what I'm doing is I'm dotting it on my face like I always do. And then I'll blend it in with my sponge. So I take the bum of the sponge, if you will, tap it into some of the foundation, and then I blend it in my skin. So the reason that I use this on her is because Ultra HD. This foundation formula is formulated for photo photographs. It's obviously on your wedding, you're looking to look good in photographs. So that was kind of the reason behind why I wanted to use this on her that day. Also, 
as a tidbit and an FYI for people, uh, SPF, which this foundation does have SPF, but it's a small amount, and I didn't see that it flashed back. However, SPF in your foundation is what's known to cause flashback in photos. So what that means is a white cast. So say you used a very white under eye powder under your eyes and the sun, sorry, the flash on the camera went off, you would get a white under eye. It would just be straight white. Now, obviously that isn't something you want. You're not looking to have white under eyes naturally. That would be a little foolish. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at foundations for your wedding day. It's just to be aware of what products are going to look like whoops, under flash photography because you're gonna get flash, you're gonna get a lot of pictures taken, you're gonna have photos obviously done um, all day, you're also going to have potentially videos blended on my face, I'm just getting a little bit more. My forehead, we all know, is where I have problem areas, I also have a little pimple right there. So I'm just putting very minimal on my forehead because I don't know how this foundation is gonna do sinking into my lines. Personally, I will try to set it to make that not happen, but you just don't know. So this foundation, I would say, is probably medium to full coverage. It definitely, putting it on my neck, just let everything blend. You don't wanna forget your neck. That's an FYI, if you're doing your own wedding makeup, you need to take your foundation all the way down your neck. And if you're doing your own wedding makeup and your hair is going to be up, you wanna one, make sure you blend it onto your ears which I have earrings in already, so it's kind of difficult. Um, and if your hair is all the way up, to blend it around the back of your neck because you don't want to have a line of where your foundation is and where your skin tone is. So, next step. I used on my aunt and on myself the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector in light to medium. I did use a brush for her, so I'll show you how I did that. If I can find it, here it is. So, because obviously I don't wanna dip my finger in and put it on her face, I did use a brush and I dabbed it right into my darkest portion. So you wanna bring your brush all the way up. So my darkest is right here. So you can see it on the side, like way up here and right under my eye. So you're trying to blend it into all of that so you don't have that darkest portion anymore. Now I'm gonna go to the other side. Then I took my sponge, I blend it out just so that it's nice and blended and ready for concealer. When I did my aunt's makeup for her wedding, I did do her eyes first because we had noticed in the test that when she blinked, because I was using waterproof mascara on her naturally, when she blinked, she would, like as I was putting the mascara on, she would get it under her eyes. So we did eyes first, so that way when I went in with her foundation and concealer later, she didn't mess it up with the waterproof mascara because that would have been a big bummer so that's just an, a tidbit if you know that one you're gonna have a lot of fallout fall from your eyeshadow onto your face you might want to do your eyeshadow first and then two if you have a hard time with mascara or liner you might want to put your foundation on first I'm putting my covergirl true blend undercover concealer on in the shade natural ivory I believe my shade is yes um, and all the places that I would like to highlight and bring it forward and then add hair coverage. So now I'm going to take my sponge and just blend it all out. Another thing that I highly recommend for anyone, even if you're doing makeup on yourself for your wedding day, is to do a trial. And that is where you do the entire process. You do everything that you think that you wanna do. You use the products, you do whatever. And I would say do it, I only did it for my aunt about a week ahead of time, but maybe two weeks ahead of time, because then you also get to see if it's gonna make your skin react in any way. If you're not gonna agree, your skin may not agree with the products. Also, it gives you an opportunity to see if you need to get anything else in order to make it how you want it. If you're, you know, then you can wear it throughout the day and see if your makeup breaks apart because it's you know you do sweat too much or the product isn't good for dry skin you look dry and those are really important things that I find when I'm trying to figure out what's going to work for a wedding day but also for longevity because if your makeup's gonna break up because your foundation doesn't work with your skin type then obviously your foundation's not going to stay on for a long period of time 
So this foundation, which is the one that I used on that day, I know did not break up on my skin. It stayed really nice. My lines didn't even have a problem. My smile lines didn't have a problem. It was awesome, especially when I'm smiling a lot. So those are just things that like through trial and error is what I found to be the most effective when you're trying to select products for a long wear kind of look. It also depends on a primer. So a primer is going to keep your makeup on longer because it adds kind of like a stick, a sticky base for your makeup to go onto. All blended. Great. Now, personally for me, it depends on skin type, but for me on the day of the wedding, I wore this Physicians, for Physicians Formula Organic Wear bronzer under my bronzer. So to have a cream base for the powder to go on top of is going to add to the longevity. It also gives you another layer of bronzer. So that way if your powder bronzer starts to fade, you do still have something underneath. So I'm going to do that before I set my face because I don't want this because it is a cream to interact with the powders in any way. So I'm gonna do this before I set my face and then we will go on to powder. All right, so I take the bronzer and I take the bottom, the little round part of my sponge and I just wipe it on. Also, do you notice this was clean before we started this video? I'm not saying I'm becoming a better person, but I just wanted to point out that the bottom of my sponge was clean. Now it's not, but. So then I pull my hair back a little bit and I go into, so see how on my face, I'm staring straight ahead, I do have slight hollows and shadows in this area. So what you're doing with the bronzer is you're trying to highlight that, especially on your wedding day. You just wanna accent your features, unless you wanna go crazy on makeup, which is also your choice. But typically a bride is just wanting to accent their features. So you look straight ahead and you see where you get a slight shadow on your face. Or another way to find the hollows is to suck your cheeks in, because you're gonna be able to see the form of your bones, your skull underneath. So doing that, I'm gonna take, typically it goes from the top of your ear to the bottom of your mouth. I'm gonna take my bronzer and go about, let's say, to the outside of my eye and go down that far. Okay, so typically the top of your ear. So I start up here and I work my way down. Right in the hollow. Okay, once I deposited most of the product off the sponge, I'm going to, because I was pinching it, I'm gonna let it go and turn it and try to blend it better, just by tapping around. You don't ever wanna go lower than this line though, or else you're going to lose your like sculpted angle that you just created. Now I'm gonna go in again with additional product on the sponge, and I'm gonna go up and around. So I come up to my temple and then up to the top of my head. And so I'm gonna pull my hair back, I do want to blend the bronzer into my hair a little bit because I don't want to have a line where my skin tone is showing on the side of the bronzer because that won't make it look natural. So I do pounce it or bounce it, if you will, slightly on the hairline as I'm doing the blending. So as you can see, my temple area, I'm just adding more. And then up top, I kind of thin it out a little bit just because, I mean, unless you have a larger forehead and you do want to sculpt that more, you can go full like this and it will just make your forehead look a little smaller. It depends on what you're trying to do for your face shape. Like in photos, if you're like, wow, my forehead looks huge, then you know that you're going to want to contour your forehead. If you're like, wow, my chin looks a little rough, then you're going to want to contour under your neck. Like those are things that you know about yourself because you know what you do and don't like about yourself in pictures. So at the end of the day, makeup can make you feel better about yourself but that's not the reason you put makeup on. We're all beautiful without it, but just saying like you can accent and highlight the features that you really want to highlight. You can also fix the face shape in a way that you want it to. For example, like I will add some to my nose because when I smile, my nose gets really wide and I don't love that all the time. So I do like to contour my nose a little bit so that way it looks thinner when I do my full smile. Just a little tidbit. All right, now I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll show you the nose in a second. I have cute by a little tucker in here with me. He's making, oh, making cute little dog noises. What a good little boy. What a good boy you are, Tucker. 
All right, we're browns on both sides. Now I'm gonna take the product on the sponge. Once again, I'm going to pinch it, so that way it's a little thinner. See how wide it is when I don't pinch? Then I'm going to take it on my nose, start up by my eyebrow, and just go straight down. This is not the most precise way to contour your nose, and I do want to make that known. Using a brush and even like a contour powder is definitely more precise. I just like to use the cream because I'm obsessed with creams, if we're being honest. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a little bit more and do the same thing on the other side, but it just has an FYI, so I'm going to actually take the bottom of my sponge that had foundation on it, tap that out a little bit so it blends a little better. But just as a note, so as you can see, I've added a shadow on this side of my nostril and of my nose. So my nose looks thinner on this side. This side looks a little wider because we're not, sorry, my septum's falling out. Because we haven't pulled the shadow. So right now my shadow's down here. We haven't pulled the shadow up, which would make my nose look thinner. So the shadow down here, unlike this side where the nose shadow is higher up, is gonna make the nose look wider. Now I'm thinning it out by adding the shadow up top. That is the beauty of makeup. We'll also go over it again with our bronzer brush. I'm adding some to the bottom of my nose so it contours it a little bit. And then another little tidbit is if you wanna create like a big circle, like a button nose, you can take the same sponge. I don't have any more products. It will be really aggressive if I do. And just kind of tap it up top. And you create that little button. It's also nice because when sun naturally hits your face, you're going to get bronzed on the bridge of your nose. So adding a little bit on your bridge is never a bad thing. Now I'm going to take some. And I'm going to go under my neck. So that way I contour my neck. And then to make your lips look more full, you take the same, I don't have more product, just whatever's left over from blending my neck, and I put it under my lip to make it look more plump, which also I need to take all the foundation off. So I purchased this Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder for the wedding day because I had heard wonderful things about it. But from my research, I found that if you have much oilier skin, this one is more of like a, I'm not gonna say hydrating powder because powders aren't going to hydrate your face. At the end of the day, it's a powder, it's gonna dry your skin slightly, whatever. But it's made more for normal to dry skin where I think it just gives a slight amount of natural finish to your skin and it doesn't mattify. If you have more oily skin or if you're going to be out in the hot sun, which this did a great job in the hot sun, so I'm not saying that this wasn't good for a really hot 90 degree day on a bride, but if you're nervous about your skin getting oily or you're more prone to have oily skin, your makeup breaks up more and you get really shiny in your T-zone, I'd recommend the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder because that one is known to mattify. I'll link it down below just like all the other products I talk about wiping that foundation off my lips because it looks nuts. And now we're gonna set our face. So, you know how I normally do this. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to tap out my forehead to get rid of all those lines that we don't want. Then I'm gonna take the tip of my sponge, tap it into the powder, work it into my skin just a little bit and then tap it onto here. Grab the rest from off my skin, tap it on. One thing that I did for my aunt and I would do for any bride is, in order to make your makeup last in the heat, you're going to want to set almost everything. The problem for me is I have incredibly dry skin, as we all know, and I don't, even though I want longevity, I can still make my makeup last without setting my whole face because I'm so dry. If I was more normal to oily, then I would want to set my whole face to force the makeup to stay on better. However, my skin will just look crepey and gross. So it also matters how you want to look in photos. I'm going to set my under eye now. And one thing I've learned about my own face, this is just from trials and tribulations of working on my own makeup, that I don't like to set, this is a recent discovery actually, and get some powder out. I don't like to set out here. 
I only want to set in here where I do crease slightly because when I smile, if I set out here, this area looks really dry in photos and I don't want that, obviously. So I'm tapping out my concealer. I'm taking the powder on my sponge and I'm just going to go right in here. The sponge is very large, so it's very hard to like pinpoint, but I'm only going in the inner corner of my eye and I'm not going out to the edge. All right, and then one more place that I did set on my face the day of the wedding was my smile line. So these lines, I don't want to crease all day, especially when you're smiling a lot. So I tap them out, take the powder, Work it into my skin so there's only a little bit, and then I just set right there. And that way the makeup will not crease all day on my smile lines. But I also would like to point out, just as an FYI, if you have lines on your face, your makeup's gonna crease in them. We can't be fooled to think that no matter how much powder or whatever we set, like your makeup's gonna crease. You're human, you have lines on your face. Makeup isn't going to perfectly just like magically work and not crease into those or fall into those lines because that's just what, what our face does. And that's not your fault, you're human, you're allowed to have those things happen to you and God forbid <laughs> you look like a human. It's okay, don't beat yourself up. So my next step is going to be bronzer. Best bronzer in the world is Phys Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I just, I'm not even gonna, it's not a competition. Butter bronzer. This is in the shade bronzed, using my Real Techniques powder brush. A lot on there. Tap off the excess, and now we're bronzing. So once again, you're just gonna follow that same line that you created with your sculpting bronzer, and you're not going lower than that line. I will show you a trick on how to fix it if you do go too low and you make that line kind of muddy. I'll show you how you can make that line look sharper in a minute. One thing I would also like to point out when you're doing your makeup, so I'm pinching the brush again and I'm going down the sides of my nose. But one thing is that I've noticed, and I think a lot of people do who wear makeup often, is that naturally your powders are gonna fade a little bit throughout the day. So if you don't want your bronzer or your blush to fade, you should put or at least look like it's gone by the time you get to the photo portion of your wedding day, you're going to want to take a little bit extra. So make yourself look a little bit more bronze than you typically would, or a little bit more blushy, because your blush, one, is the first thing that fades off your face. So by the time you get down the aisle, your blush could already fade. So you, you obviously could touch up, but if you don't have to, then great. That day on the wedding, I didn't touch my makeup once. I didn't touch anything on my face. I didn't add more powder, I didn't add more concealer, I didn't even spray my face again of setting spray. I didn't do anything. That's how long that makeup can last, this makeup that I'm showing. If you don't want anything to fade at all, you just add a hair more than you typically would. I don't know if you saw, I brought the bronzer, which I'm actually gonna do a little bit more of, down my neck to create a shadow down here. I'm just gonna keep it going all the way down. And then under my lip again, all the same places we took the cream bronzer. So now I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush in the shade Always Cheeky with my angled blush brush. Go nuts in there, tap off the excess, and swipe up. So when you do more of a contour shape, it's going to bring your face upwards as well because you're forcing the color and the eye up. A little bit on the nose, a little on the forehead. Okay. Now the next step would typically be highlighter. However, this particular Hollywood Flawless filter underneath my skin kind of makes me look really highlighted and nice without even having to add highlighter. I personally don't love highlighter on myself. Other people it looks beautiful on, but especially on slightly mature skin, obviously I don't have mature skin, I'm like a child, but Highlighter can really accent texture, and you don't want that when you're trying to look flawless all day long. So if you have any bumps, any sort of 
anything other than smooth on your cheeks, it's gonna show that. I personally can go without highlighter and just use this cream or liquid highlighter underneath my foundation and be perfectly fine. If you want more highlighter, you could always add a little bit of that on top. And you know what? Maybe I'll show you right now just so we can do it. So I'm going to take this again. I'm going to wipe off some of the excess on the side. And I'm just going to dot three little dots. Dot, dot. And then I'm gonna start to blend it out with my finger. Then I'm gonna take my sponge again, take the side and blend it again. And I'm just blending it all out just so that way it's nice and even. Okay, so now we're extra glowy. Then I'll take my bronzer brush, just kind of go over it to make sure it's all blended together. And the same thing on this side. So now we're highlighted on top of our skin as well, just to show you that you can do that. Um, I didn't take my bronzer brush and blend this one out though, so we're gonna do that. Okay, now my next step, I would like to show you that trick that I was talking about. My hair is getting crazy, like pulling it all over the place. And how to clean up the line of your bronzer in case you made it a little too muddy and went a little too low. So I'm gonna get a decent amount of powder on the tip of my sponge. It's not fully on the tip, but on the tip and around. And what you do is so you create that line underneath your shadow. So you can take, the sponge is damp by the way, I didn't mention that, but take it and you form a line from, and I'm gonna have powder on it. So you form that line from the bottom of your shadow to the corner of your mouth. And then you just blend it down a little bit and you let it sit. Obviously I'm going to do it to the other side. So now I just need to let it sit for a few minutes <clears throat> and then I can wipe it away with a clean brush. But while we're working on that, I'm going to prime my eyelids. So this is the eyeshadow primer I use all the time and it is very good. It's the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish shadow primer. You squeeze out a little tiny bit, just a little bit because a little goes a long way with this. And then I take that bit and I warm it up between my fingers and then tap it on my eyes. If you want your eyeshadows to be on all day, all night, this is a key step. Okay, I'm gonna just take this brush because it's clean and brush away that powder. Great. I don't like to keep it on. You can keep it for longer and it'll make it a more stark line, but I don't particularly like that. So today I'm gonna go in with a few things. What is on the back of this bad boy? This is my Tartlet and Bloom palette. I use this palette on an everyday basis, as you can see and how many shadows I've hit pan on. Well, it's just this one, but this one's about to hit pan. I use this one all the time. I use this one. This guy I set with, which we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna take this brush. It's like a flat shader brush. I'm gonna go into Charmer, which is the white. And I'm just gonna tap out any lines that I have. And I set from brow to lid. It also brightens up your eye, which is really nice later on. I just thought of this, so I'm sorry this is coming now, but another drugstore option for foundation that is considered like a photo specific foundation that I actually used on my sister on her wedding day is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. I think I have it, hold on. Ah, oh, there it is. I believe this is the dewy one, yeah. So they have a dewy and like a natural or a matte finish foundation. Um, so this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy. It's also well known as something that they formulated specifically for photos. So if you need another alternative that's cheaper, because I think this foundation is like $42. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, then that's another option. Once again, though, I would just test it and make sure that it works for your skin before you go into it on your wedding day. So I'm going to take 
this brush, this big fluffy blender brush, and I'm gonna dip into Flower Child, which is a shade that is very similar to my skin tone, and I'm just going to start to blend on my eye. For my particular eye shape, because I have such almond eyes, I do like to try and bring my shadow out in like a little pointed shape on the edge. That's our first shade. Then we're gonna go into this brush. It's slightly smaller, so compared to the original. It's definitely smaller, more pointed, a little bit more precise. I'm just cleaning it off on this paper towel or washcloth. I'm gonna go into Smarty Pants, which is a shade that I have like nothing left in. Tap off the excess and go into my crease. One thing to know, when you are putting shadow down, where you put the brush down first is where most of the pigment's gonna go. So you don't wanna put it in here and start there because you're gonna have a lot of deposited pigment there unless that's what you're going for. And if you wanna go out here, like how I like to drag mine out, I don't want to deposit all the pigment out there either because then it won't be a soft, subtle drag out. So typically I like to start like right around here where I'm going to add the most definition with deeper shades anyways. And that way if I have the most pigment, it still gives me the opportunity to blend it out later. Taking that first brush and just blending, adding a little onto the outer corner of my eye. Then I'm going to take this brush. It's like that wider, fluffy brush, but then you turn it and it's more thin. Gives you a little bit more detail in the crease and I'm gonna go into Rebel, which is this shade right here. Tap off the excess and then since this, I wanna deposit most of the pigment on the outer corner, I'm gonna take it and pat it on the outer corner first and then blend up into the crease. Just a little bit. Now that it's in there, because I don't want it to go nuts, I'm gonna take my second brush that I used and blend it out. Just take a little bit of Smarty Pants, that second shade, and just tap it on top, just to kind of deepen it a little bit, but also not to, and to blend it easier, but not to make it much darker. Otherwise, I would just go back in with that original shade. Now I'm gonna take a completely clean, giant, fluffy blending brush and just go over and blend everything together. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly do this eye before we get into the shimmer, because I haven't decided which shimmer I'm gonna use yet. Then we'll be back, so please hold. All right, so we have our starting shades on both eyes, and now here's why I'm not sure what I wanna do. So the shade that I used on the actual day was this shade from ColourPop called Snake Eyes. And it is gorgeous. I'll show you. Let's watch it for you. It is just like this really interesting, wow, it's so beautiful. Like taupey shade. Stunning. But the other shade that I have that I've never used, but is like a cult favorite on the makeup realm, is this shade called Amber Rush by L'Oreal. That like a chunk in there somehow. It is pretty, it's like a loose pigment. They actually are pretty similar, but this Amber Rush is definitely pink in comparison. You know what, I think we're gonna do Amber Rush today just cause it's fun. It's new, it's fun, it's exciting. Try to wipe that stuff off. My battery's gonna die. I don't know, everything's going great. I need to find my other battery. All right, so to maintain a little bit of control, I'm gonna try to do it with a brush to start. We'll see. So we're gonna put it on our finger. On our finger and we're gonna tap. She's pretty. It's a little deeper than I was kind of thinking. Maybe I'll combine the two, the two shimmer shades. What do you think about that? I'm now gonna take snake eyes on my finger. It's gonna tap it right on top. It's gonna make a little concoction. Snake Eyes is a little brighter, and I do want it to be slightly brighter. Hmm, it's pretty. I'll take it. So now, to blend that shimmer into the corner, or like into our eye, we're gonna go back into Rebel, that darker color down here. And we're just gonna pat on the outside, 
and kind of brush into that shade. Then we're gonna take, if I can find it, right there, found it, with Smarty Pants on it. And we're gonna go into the crease. So to kind of blend that crease in with the shimmer shades. Just wanna make it nice and cohesive and then out again. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the lower lash line, but I wanna show you one more trick again. When I was doing my eyes, I went a little lower than I wanted to on my outer corner. So same as we did with the bronzer, where you can create a line to make it so that way you look more chiseled. I'm gonna do the same thing on my eyes, where I take my face powder and I'm going to just dab a little bit right here to accentuate that straight line, especially because my base is already done and I can't do it with foundation or sorry, with a makeup wipe because my foundation's done. Just gives you the ability to create that line that you want, whatever. So now I'm just gonna let that sit while I blend my under eyes. This is a JH33, which is very similar to this brush, but a little bit fluffier. So I'm gonna use that for the <clears throat> crease shades underneath my eye. So I'm gonna dip into Smarty Pants with this brush and I'm just gonna go under my eyeball with it. And then I'm going to take my pencil brush, I'm going to go into Rebel, and I'm just going to put it in the outer corner, I'm going to tap it on, then I'm going to take my original brush and just blend that out. Great, that's all I'm doing on the lower. And I'm just going to tap some more powder right here, and right here. I'm going to add a little line to the top of my eyes. This is the Epic Ink Liner by NYX Cosmetics. I'm just going to do a thin line across the whole eye. Alright, so now I have our line on. Great. I'm going to take our fluffy blender with no product on it and just blend away. It doesn't do it as well, like you can still see there's a little bit of a darker shade under here, but it just does enough so that way it just reaffirms the shape. For usual, I'm going to take my L'Oreal Infallible Matte Matic and put it on my tight line. Oh, one thing I did forget. I need to dip into a new palette for this though. The inner corner highlight I used that day was the Morphe James Charles palette, and it was this shade right here. I'm gonna take this little brush and dip it into that inner corner highlight shade that I just mentioned. Tap off the excess and just go right in there. I also like to bring it up a little bit and so it kind of highlights this whole inner portion. And then we're gonna take that same shade that I just used for an inner corner highlight, which is this one. And we're gonna mix it with this one. I'm gonna put that on our brow bone to highlight our brow bone, curl our lashes, which is very important. Also wearing a waterproof mascara on your wedding day and a waterproof eyeliner. If I can give you any advice, it's that. Because if you cry, if you sweat, waterproof mascara also keeps your curl longer. So if you're gonna curl your eyelashes and then want it to stay all day, waterproof mascara is your girl. I just hate waterproof mascara, so I don't use it on myself. Ooh always get mascara on my eyelid but you don't touch it and you wipe it away later with a waterproof one though that'll be hard which is why I did the eyes first for the wedding this past weekend all right mascara on two eyes wonderful now before I forget now that I've let my tight line eyeliner dry I'm gonna wipe off any excess on my waterline Take my nude liner, this is Honey Dude from ColourPop, which is probably very expired and should be replaced, but here we are. And I'm gonna put that on my waterline to brighten up my eyeballs. What are you doing, baby boy? Do you wanna come say hi? Come here. Come say hi, come on. Come up here, come on. 
You can do it. Come on. Good boy. Oh, come on. One more. Big jump. Big jump. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at What's this? What's this? Oh, no, not the makeup. He just wants to sniff the makeups. Oh, it's a chucker. Oh, it's a chucker boy. He's such a good boy. He's just sitting on my lap right now. So uncomfortable. Are you happy? You want to say hi to everybody? Say hi. Say hi, Tucker boy. You want to get down? You get down. Now he's just going to stand right here and sniff. You just sniffing? Are you sniffing, good boy? Are you sniffing? Got distracted so waterline on this side okay before i go into putting lashes on which i did not put on the day of the wedding but for the sake of wedding tips for anybody watching i'm going to show you my easy super easy super 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 easy trick to put lashes on but setting spray all over the face and that is my tip my number one best way to keep your makeup on the absolute longest is to use a setting spray just very gently tapping it in to help push it into my skin with my damp sponge. But the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. If you want your makeup to last all night, all day, 24 hours, I don't even know. I haven't tested for 24 hours. It says up to 16 hour wear and I believe that 100%. But if you want your makeup to last forever, you use this setting spray. This one in particular, that is my big FYI to all the people out there who want their makeup to stay on for 12 plus hours, Urban Decay All Nighter. Swear by it, it's perfect, it's amazing. For lashes today, I'm gonna to use the Ardell Naked Lashes in the style 422. They're just like a subtle cutie pie lash. I need my scissors, I haven't even opened this yet. So I'm gonna do the old trick where we hold it up to our eye, make sure it's the right size, typically trim them. Um, but I will show you how I apply them. That's the real easy trick. You'll get my tweezers in a second, but we're gonna hold it up. They're super fluttery, like simple lashes. The Demi Wispies by Ardell are also amazing. Okay, we're gonna hold it up to our eye. Yeah, we definitely need to trim some. It's a little too much on the end. So I'm gonna trim a whole section off. Typically, unless you have like giant lashes, you're always gonna need to trim some off. So I just trimmed that much. So my tip is, okay, take your lash glue. I was just gonna put it on how I normally do, but if you're a beginner at lashes and you wanna put it on the easiest way possible, this is your tip. So you draw your lash glue on your actual lash line. The problem is you're gonna get some glue on your actual eyelashes, but you can always fix it later. The reason that is the easiest is because then you just stick this on and it sticks to exactly where you want it to go and you don't even have to really try that hard and it's amazing. So that's what I'm doing. So I draw, this is very difficult to do on camera. I draw my lash glue right where I want it. This lash glue dries clear, which is also why it's okay to do this. <laughs> Cause if it didn't dry clear, it'd look pretty bad. So now, I'm just going to try to bend these a little bit. I'll let that dry for a second. I'm going to blow your mind, okay? I'm going to blow your gosh darn mind. I personally don't do this all the time. So once I, I don't wear eyelashes all the time either. But I don't put it on like this all the time with the glue on my lash line because I feel like it puts a lot more glue in my lash line and then it's harder to take off. But if it comes to like a wedding day or a day where you want things to stay on really well, that would be your go-to. I didn't wear lashes the day of the wedding because I was taking photos on my camera. And if I'm squinting and like trying to look through the thing, my lash is just gonna irritate the hell out of me. So now it's on my tweezers. I'm just gonna put it right where I want it, right in the center. Grab this end, stick it down here. Grab this end. Get down here, stick them together. And your lashes are on. 
Like, how crazy is that? It's the easiest thing in the world. But like I said, I don't do it all the time because then my poor little lashes. Oh, these poor eyelashes having so much glue on them. They all like clump together. Okay. For that reason, I normally don't do this, but because my eyelashes are all stuck, I'm gonna go in with my mascara and try to kind of fix them. Okay, very quickly, I'm just using the Benefit Gimme Brow in the shade three. This is like a super teeny tiny little sample size and it's really cute and I love it. I'm just gonna brush that through my brows because I have very thick brows. So I don't need to really fill them in. Also on my aunt, she just wanted a natural look. So all I did was fill in her brows with this as well. Cause it does deposit a slight amount of color. So it does give you like a slight fill. Now for lips. This guy, and I'll show you what I used on my aunt and my sister actually. They both use the same lip color on their wedding dates. Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Completely Sepia, which is 602. I'm just gonna line and fill in our lips. Now this is the Maybelline Color Sensational Lipstick in the shade Truffle Tease, 930 Truffle Tease. It is gorgeous, we're just gonna do, although there is, maybe I can try to do it with my other hand. This is my non-dominant hand, so please don't judge me. Oh, that was awful. Here we go, that's better. So there's the color. This still has like eyeshadow all over it. So I just work it into the lips. So I like to blot my lips personally. I don't have a lot of excess products, so I just take my towel and I go. And then I dab it. And that, my friends, is our 12 hour plus wear makeup, wedding style makeup. I probably wouldn't go this dark on my eyes on my wedding day. However, this is what I did in that photo that everybody was voting on, so I wanted to make it the same. So I'm gonna do wear tests. Unfortunately, like I said, this took me forever to do for some reason. It is 11.43 in the afternoon. So I'll probably keep this on until like 10.30, so you'll get like 11 hours. Unfortunately, it's not 12, but I did put the foundation on long before I finished the rest of my makeup. So at the end of the day, you'll probably get 12 hours of wear out of the foundation. I'll try to stay up as long as I can, but sometimes I don't do so well. So. I'll be back with a check-in so soon, two seconds for you, but I gotta go be productive. So, I love you. I'd love it if you would subscribe, if you'd comment or like, or let me know what other videos you wanna see. My video after this, I believe, will be my no foundation routine using all creams, like a natural, glowy, beautiful look that I love in the summer, despite it being all creams. See you all soon on the next video. I love you all so much. Goodbye. Well, hello friends. I kind of forgot about the fact that I need to do like check-ins. It is currently 3 p.m. So it's been two and a half hours since I finished my video and I've been wearing glasses. So I'm sorry if I have some makeup worn off for the glasses sit. I'm working on stuff on the computer, so I need it. But some natural light, no ring light on now because I stopped the recording a while ago, but you can see that wonderful highlight. The lashes are still on, the eyeshadow looks good. My lines, not too bad. My smile lines are perfect. They don't look bad at all. My bronzer, my blush are still on. I feel like we might be, nope, the nose still looks good. That's just how my nose always looks. Just yucky in that little crease there, but not doing too bad so far and it's been two and a half hours also my hair is still looking cute so there's that so i'll check in again in a few more hours maybe like six we'll see hello friends so michelle and sean are home but 
I figured I would at least do a quick check in. I also want to rip these eyelashes off my eyes because I'm on fire. But I forgot to mention my last check in that uh, I took the lipstick off when I was eating. So that's gone. But as for right now, I'm standing in front of a window so you get like actual natural light and everything looks really good. So it's around six something. The makeup's been on for like, what, seven, almost eight hours now and we're looking fresh still. If I come on in the next check-in and these guys are off, I'm sorry, I did my best. My eyes are just on fire. Like this one itches so bad, can you see it? Just itches, it's cause I touched the dog and I'm allergic to him. Anyways, I'll see you in a few more hours. So it's 10.36. So it's been probably 12 hours by the time I actually got all this on, like the foundation base anyways. So here's what my skin looks like after 12. Honestly, you can still see some blush and some bronzer. My highlighter is still popping. Eyeshadow is still looking great. I did rip the eyelashes off, which is why you have that line, because it ripped all my eyeliner off, because my eyes were freaking out. I could not handle it. They were so itchy. I had to like use a wet washcloth in the corner of my eyes to get them to calm down, but whatever. My hands have been like all over my face. I've been editing this video actually, like all night. So I'm just like, so if it's a little worn around here, that's totally my fault, but I'd say this can be your proof that these makeup tips and tricks are the way to get your makeup to stay on for 12 hours. So on that note, I'm going to go take all this off because I've wanted to take it off for like four hours now and I'm ready to go to bed and take my hair out. So good night. Thank you. Have a good evening. I don't know. Thanks for bearing with me. It's very long AF as I'm noticing as I'm editing. So I love you so much. Bye. See you in my next one.